Hello and welcome to another episode of Full Court Finance here at Zacks. I'm your host, Ben Rains, and today we're taking a look at three giant tech stocks to consider buying before their upcoming earnings releases and possibly hold for a very long time. And those three stocks are Netflix, Taiwan Semiconductor, and Cadence Design Systems. Uh, but before we get into everything, remember to subscribe and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcast and make sure to check out our Zacks.com slash promo page for a look in some of our services, portfolios, and more. So before we jump into these three stocks, I quickly just want to go over what's going on with the broader market and then take a little bit of a look at what to expect really on a big, broad level from uh, S&P 500 earnings in the first quarter, just to give a better sense of these three stocks and maybe why we're looking at them in the context of the broader market. So headline year-over-year -year inflation came in at 3.5%. In March, that was the big news on Wednesday. That really shouldn't have scared too many uh, on Wall Street since that figure roughly matched estimates. Uh, and prices climbed from 3.2% in February. Prices did climb from 3.2%. So it was up from the, uh, the month before. But as I said, the estimates were right at around 3.5%. So nothing super shocking. And then core year of inflation came in slightly above expectations to match February at 3.8%. So obviously, that's way above those are way above the Fed's 2% flowing target. And then meanwhile, so-called super core inflation, which also strips out shelter and rent costs uh, alongside food and energy, which is the core inflation, came in at 4.8% year over year, which was its highest figure in nearly a year. So that spooked Wall Street a little bit in the sense that now the bulls were praying that inflation would surprise the downside. And instead, it showed that prices remain stubbornly high, and they're very far away from the Fed's 2% target. So Wall Street had obviously been pricing in higher for longer, but now investors are increasingly nervous that the Fed won't have any reason to cut in 2024 at all, with the economy remaining strong and stock prices really high and inflation way above its target. So uh, we saw the two-year U.S. Treasury yield climb to just under 5% yesterday. Uh, up from about 4.75% earlier in the week and way up from about 4.25% uh, at the end of 2023. Uh, we saw then the S&P 500 fall about 1% midweek to slide right back below its 21-day moving average. But then as I'm recording this on Thursday afternoon, we saw both the S&P 500 and the uh, NASDAQ climb. So the market's trying to fight its way back rather quickly uh, as that 21-day moving average is kind of is the line in the sand the bulls are trying to hold continuously. So with this in mind now, the market's going to turn its attention to the start of Q1 earnings season, which happens on Friday uh, with J.P. Morgan Chase and some of the other big banks kicking things off on Friday. And then we kind of roll into the heart of earnings season over the next several weeks and into the early parts of May. So fourth quarter earnings season was a positive catalyst for the market if we look back with solid guidance helping push stocks higher and keeping that soft economic landing theory in play. In total, S&P 500 earnings for the first quarter of 2024 are expected to climb about 2.5% year over year on 3.5% higher revenues, uh, which came after about 6.7% higher earnings last quarter and 3.9% higher revenues. Uh, so total S&P 500 earnings returned to positive growth in the third quarter of 2023 after coming in negative for three quarters in a row. Uh, our director of research here at Zacks, who does all of our deep dives into the broader earnings uh, outlook, noted that two big things kind of changed the aggregate growth picture for earnings, uh, which was the tech sector redeeming its traditional growth driver status and the net margins uh, in turning positive again. So that's that's why uh, we're seeing the big return to earnings growth. That said, though, uh, with the market now getting a little bit more nervous that the Fed's not going to lower rates, at least not when it hoped, which was the summer, that the earnings season might have to do a little bit more heavy lifting this time around if we want to really push the market higher and higher in the near term. So with that in mind, we're going to take a look at the first of our three stocks that to report in the coming days and weeks, and that is Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Co., which trades in the ticker uh, TSM. It's better known as Taiwan Semi or TSMC, uh, and they're going to report their first quarter 2024 results on Thursday, April 18th. Taiwan Semi is the largest and most dominant chip manufacturer in the world. Uh, its foundries physically build the most cutting-edge semiconductors that drive 
everything from smartphones and now AI and pretty much every other advanced technology you can think of. It boasts clients such as NVIDIA and Apple, and the firm is driving forward uh, five nanometer production and rolling out next generation three nanometer chips. In Q4, it said that three nanometer three nanometer uh, accounted for about 15% of its total revenue or Wayfair revenue, with five nanometer accounting for about 35%. It's also reaping the rewards of its founding principle continuously, which was manufacturing only. Uh, its moat is massive, considering the institutional know-how and the enormous costs involved. They're really one of the only pure play chip manufacturers, and it's actively expanding outside of Taiwan, uh, which is great news for most investors, especially when we consider the broader geopolitical tensions with China that don't seem to be going away anytime soon and likely won't. So uh, even though it's facing near term construction setbacks and delays, given just the sheer complexity of the task involved, it's building some huge semiconductor fabrication plants in the U.S., spurred by massive government incentives, which we'll touch on in a second. And then um, in late February, it opened a majority-owned subsidiary Japan Advanced Semiconductor. So it's another big factory outside of Taiwan. So earlier this year in Japan, that's a great news. And then uh, news broke actually earlier this week that Taiwan Semiconductor was getting about $6.6 billion from the U.S. government for a factory complex under construction in Phoenix. And it will expand its operation scope and sophistication, which is part of a drive to regrow the domestic semiconductor industry. This is from the Wall Street Journal. It's going to invest more than $65 billion total to add a third chip factory to the manufacturing complex that it started to build in 2021. Uh, and Taiwan-based company said that it's also currently going to start trying to make cutting-edge two nanometer chips at one of these factories there. So this is a, a good sign for not only U.S. manufacturing, but for investors as well. It's just as if they're able to expand beyond Taiwan. And then we just noting a uh, simple fact that you, the U.S. Uh, chip manufacturing share fell from 12% in uh or fell to 12% in 2020 from 37% back in 1990. So the U.S. government uh, realizing that having all of your key chips made in a distant country that has tensions with China, your biggest rival, is not the smartest thing. So having a company like Taiwan Semi start building plants in the U.S. is a good thing for the U.S. and most U.S.-based investors and the, probably the company itself. Uh with uh, these projects, the, said the U.S. is now on track to make about 20% of the world's cutting-edge chips by 2030. These are obviously just projections, and as we said, they've been facing some slowdowns. Overall, the company averaged about 18% revenue growth between 2018 and 2022, including 29% expansion in 2022. Now we're looking, or Wall Street's looking ahead to a return to double-digit top and bottom line growth after a cyclical downturn in 2023, which is very common in the chip space. So the company topped our Q4 estimates back in January and provided upbeat guidance, saying at the time that its quarter was supported by continued strong ramp of its industry-leading three nanometer technology. So looking ahead, we're calling for 23% revenue growth in 2024, from about 69 billion to up up to 85, over 85 billion, and then another 20% growth next year to get up to 102 billion. So massive top line growth, which is a continuation of its recent impressive stretch outside of uh, that 2023 downturn. And then on the bottom line, we're calling for 19% adjusted earnings growth and then another 24% adjusted earnings growth next year. And in terms of estimate revisions, it's kind of stagnated a bit recently. Uh, overall, it's earn yeah, it's, it's earnings estimates are kind of around where they've been over the last several months. That's why it lands a Zach's argument number three hold at the moment. That said, it's topped our estimates by an average of 8% in the trailing four quarters. Then in terms of the stock price, uh, the stock has doubled the tech sector over the last 10 years, up 600%. That said, it's also underperformed that sector over the last three years, up 20% versus 26% for the broader, broader tech sector, though it is finally kind of breaking out. So it broke out to new all-time highs in March, up 55% in the last six months versus tech's 22% climb. Uh, it's trying to maintain uh, its... Uh, support at the 21-day moving average, kind of along with the market. It's solidly above there at the moment, uh, but in the, the coming days, that could be kind of the line in the sand that they're trying to hold. It's trading at around neutral RSI levels as well. 
And then valuation-wise, it's trading at a 15% discount to tech. This is despite that massive outperformance over the last 10 years at 22.3 times 4, 12 month earnings. This is also a 35% discount to its 10-year highs, even though it's trading near fresh all-time highs. The company also pays a dividend and has a really robust balance sheet. Uh, and seven of the nine brokerage recommendations that Zacks has are strong buys. So certainly Taiwan Semi is worth considering. Uh, like everything, buying it just for a post-earnings pop is always risky, but definitely worth considering as a long-term investment, kind of no matter what happens to the stock price in the near term. With that said, in full disclosure, I own Taiwan Semiconductor personally uh, in my personal portfolio. So moving on to another stock that is Netflix which trades the ticker NFLX. And they are set to report their Q1 2024 results also on Thursday, April 18th. So people know Netflix probably a little bit more uh, than Taiwan Semi since a lot of people have a, a very personal relationship with Netflix. But they really did change the entertainment industry forever. And that's reflected in, if you look over the net last 20 years, 15 years in its stock price, altering the way people watch movies and TV shows, really changing the entire entertainment industry. And its Vanguard status and growing content library have helped it maintain that edge over all the other players in the space, Disney, Apple, Amazon, and the countless other streamers. That said, though, the stock did get crushed for slowing top line expansion and then fears about that growing competition uh, and possible consolidation in the industry. But that said, they kind of addressed a lot of those anxieties already, and that's why the stock is rebounded in a massive way off its off its lows. Uh, it also crushed membership estimates throughout 2023. It added 13.1 million net new paid subscriptions in the fourth quarter, uh, 50% more than Wall Street had projected, reaching about 260 million globally. Better yet, it was the most the company had ever added in a single quarter outside of the first quarter of 2020, which was when that COVID outbreak first hit. Uh, so that's a great sign for just that kind of growth that it's doing. Uh, Netflix added more subscribers on its own than Wall Street had predicted for Netflix, Disney, and Warner Brothers. Uh, last period, the company is also significantly ramping up its investment in live programming. They're also doing a big push to cut back on sharing your accounts, so that's a, a positive sign. They're also rolling out uh, a lower-cost advertising-based subscription, which is helping them grow. So both uh, cutting back on sharing too many accounts with people who don't live in the same house and then rolling out those ad based uh, lower lower end uh, subscriptions has helped them grow significantly. And as it also just said, they're investing heavily in live programming. That's kind of the future of this streaming world. So they announced a 10 year deal with WWE this year uh, to bring the popular wrestling shows such as raw to Netflix in the U S and certain areas. And then some of the bigger, bigger news recently, uh, they're going to live stream a boxing match featuring Mike Tyson, a former heavyweight champ of the world, and then YouTube star who's now a boxer, Jake Paul, which these these have kind of become the new rage in boxing. But they're they're paying a pretty hefty amount, and this is going to be their new avenue of growth is these, these big one-off things that are going to get people to hopefully tune in and uh, have a Netflix subscription. That fight's going to take place over the summer, July 20th. Uh, at the AT&T Stadium where the Cowboys play in Texas. Uh, so yeah, we, we said the company finished with 260 million global subscribers that easily outpaced uh, Disney, which totaled 150 million streaming subscriptions across its two services, which includes Hulu, uh, which actually slightly came down from the prior quarter, which was a kind of a shocking thing for Disney and shows just how important Netflix is and able to grow its subscriptions as they're all afraid of all these other companies eating its lunch. It's It's been able to withstand all of the barrage of Apple and Amazon and everybody else. Yeah. And as I said, that low cost ad tier subscriptions gaining a lot of traction. It's also trying to expand into the video game segment as well. So if we look back and in terms of recent growth, the company did about 7% growth last year and 7% growth the year before that, which was a big slowdown from the growth that it had been doing prior to that. But now Netflix is returning to 15% growth expected in 2024 and then another 12% growth expected next year. So back to more solid growth as the company gets bigger and bigger. And then also Wall Street's happy with the fact that they're growing their bottom line now 
uh, significantly as well. So we're calling for 41% adjusted earnings growth this year and then 23% adjusted earnings growth in 2025. And in terms of its earnings estimate revisions, they've kind of, like Taiwan Semi, stagnated recently. So they landed Zach's rank number three hold, but they're up from uh, where they were before the company reported its Q4 results. And they missed on the bottom line last quarter, but Wall Street was really impressed with the big subscriber beat. So that could be kind of what moves the stock in the near term is how they do on the subscriber figures. Uh, as I said, I, or I, I think I just mentioned it's a number three hold at the moment. And then in terms of its stock price performance, the stock's up 1,200% in the last 10 years. First, tech's roughly 300% climb. And then its run over the last 20 and 15 years is even more staggering. The stock is now somewhat close to returning to its all-time highs, having climbed 240% off its lows and nearly up 30% year-to-date, yet it's still trading 10% below its peaks. This is despite the fact that NVIDIA and a bunch of other huge tech companies are trading at brand new all-time highs. So still some room to grow there for Netflix. It's currently trying to find uh, support at its 21-day moving average. It's kind of chopping around there over the last several days, and it's trading at neutral RSI levels. And in terms of its valuation, it's trading at a 90% discount to its highs over the last 10 years and 50% below its median, despite just being 10% below its uh, highs in terms of its price at 34 times forward 12-month earnings. So Netflix, another name to consider adding heading into that report. As I said, in the near term, it might trade just based on what it does in subscriber uh, numbers and then its outlook for subscribers, even though they don't really they don't supply that information anymore. But Wall Street has estimates they're gauging for. And if they if they deem it as a, a good quarter with a good outlook, they'll send the stock price either climbing or tumbling in the near term, but long term. Netflix certainly seems like a, a nice buy and hold tech candidate. And then the last stock we're looking at today is Cadence Design Systems, which trades in the ticker CDNS. They report their first quarter 2024 results on Monday, April 22nd. So the stock provides investors a pretty nice chance to get into the booming world of AI and semiconductors. More importantly, the company is poised to benefit from AI and beyond, kind of no matter who the near term winners is or winners are. So it doesn't if NVIDIA and other companies don't end up being the long term winners of AI uh, 10 years from now, a company like Cadence stands to benefit kind of no matter who is the AI star then. Uh, so their modeling and computational software is used to design semiconductors and other highly complex technologies. The firm's tagline is that it helps turn design concepts into reality, and it's part of the broader electronic design automation segment that's growing more crucial as chips get smaller and smaller and just infinitely more complex. Uh, Cadence in the electronic design automation field empower companies such as NVIDIA and really every other chip company by providing them with the ability to simulate chips before they're made in that that growing complexity is needed for AI and hyperscale computing. And they've kind of been a, a key player in these companies being able to roll out more complex chips. It boasts NVIDIA as a customer because the GPU and AI chip powerhouse loves its simulation capabilities. And the company is now having more uh, impact, as I said, as companies like NVIDIA are trying to do ever more complex and microscopic chips well below five nanometers into the three and two nanometer space, and maybe even further beyond that. Uh, it's one of a few major players in that vital electronic design automation world. Uh, and fiscal 2023 revenue climbed by 15% with adjusted earnings up 20%. It topped our Q4 estimates back in February and it beat on the bottom line again, having now surpassed our bottom line estimates for five years running. Uh, its revenue has benefited from higher customer demand amid robust design activity and strong operational execution, is what the company said. And it ended 2023 with a record backlog of $6 billion and uh, current remaining performance obligations of $3.2 billion. It also expanded its par partnership with ARM uh, and NVIDIA. So it provided solid guidance as well as the company is said to benefit from, quote, secular trends in digital transformation, hyper hyperscale computing, autonomous driving all bolstered by the AI super cycle. So that's that's just kind of, those are the buzzwords you hear, but a company like Cadence is actually set to benefit from it, not just kind of, you know, like a strange way that they're helping drive this growth now and for years and possibly decades to come. 
Uh, it's projected to post 12 percent higher sales in 2024 and then grow by another 13 percent 2025 to go to about 5.2 billion. Meanwhile, it's adjusted earnings are set to climb 15 percent this year and another 18 percent in fiscal 2025. Um, like all of the companies on this list, it's a Zach's ranked number three hold at the moment, and its earnings revisions have kind of gone sideways over the last several months, but they are up for both 2024 and 2025 since before its fourth quarter report. And as I mentioned already, uh, it's crushed our bottom line estimates, or at least topped our bottom line, bottom line estimates for five years running. The stock price is up 2,000% in the last 10 years. This reverse tech's 300%. This helps it easily outpace Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, Microsoft, Meta, doubling all of them during that stretch. It's also crushed all those names uh, in the last five years, up 370%. And the stock's up 45% in the last 12 months. It's currently trying to find some support at its 50-day moving average, having slipped below the 21-day a little bit earlier. And it's now slightly below neutral RSI levels. It's still well above its 21-week moving average, so that could be a line in the sand. Uh, the bulls might have to hold if it faces more selling pressure along with the market. Uh, unlike some of the other names, its valuation's a little bit stretched. Uh, it's trading at 60 times forward earnings, but it's not necessarily stretched in terms of where it's been historically. It's just way more expensive than the broader tech sector, which trades at 26 times. Uh, but Wall Street's been willing to pay up for that stock for a long time since it's actually trading at a 17% discount to its five-year highs and not too far above its median during that stretch. Uh, so yeah, Cadence's modeling and computational software is expanding alongside complex chips and AI, and it's certainly worth considering uh, as it's set to benefit from those, those super cycles for years and years to come. Uh, so yeah, all three of these stocks, Netflix, Taiwan Semiconductor and Cadence are certainly worth considering ahead of their upcoming earnings. Obviously, if you're looking to play these just for a near term pop, slightly more risky. Uh, longer term, these seem to be solid buy and hold candidates. So that does it for another episode of Full Court Finance. Until next time, I'm your host, Ben Rains. And remember, if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot us an email over at podcast at zax.com. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.